you're ready. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> so they have a toaster oven, oven in the microwave. We were able to use that. Um, the toaster oven we thought initially didn't work, and then we found out. You gotta plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> so the lure of this place, really, what I saw in Airbnb was these full pane glass doors, right? So this is up. <laughs> Open this up. Why can I never get to where I need to go? Mode, I need to go to mode. Video. I'm gonna cuss at you in a moment. Uh-oh. So welcome to Sippy Cup Adventures of Northern California. I'm Patty. I'm Darren. And we're a travel channel exclusive to Northern California. And today we're gonna learn how to use our GoPro. So in this video, we're at this Airbnb up by Rollins Reservoir in Colfax slash Grass Valley in Northern California. One of the lures to it was that there's a little beach or your own private little beach. So we took the hike yesterday. Go ahead. All right. We took the hike yesterday and the first steps and the heart last steps are the toughest. So we're going to chronicle this. Our GoPro, my bra, which is well needed. So, there you go. You tell us if this little trail down to the water is worth it. It's a little switchback trail. Um, I have one problem with it so far. Shoes, people. Yeah, you can't wear flip-flops. No. <laughs> so. By the way, I might've just pulled a muscle. <laughs> Yeah. So before we get to the short hike, let's talk about my shorts. It has come to our attention that an upside down pineapple is a secret symbol used by swingers. Not that type of swinger. Or this type, but yeah, here, maybe. And not only do I have pineapples, some of them being upside down, my pineapples are even wearing thongs. Okay, this is a PSA that we don't partake. Thank you for your time. Moving on. Got like three little gnats that could have been mosquitoes in the bathroom. If you heard me hitting the wall. Have a walking stick. This part and the last part is the toughest. All right. Oh, so we got that on film. So yeah, look it. We're actually hiking. Actually got tennis shoes on. Let's see that. So we're gonna go down to the lake and see if we can navigate that. You let us know. Paul Parsons and his Choose Adventure California style would be proud. There are these little steps that Patty's gonna navigate. Well, I got to film you going down. I thought you were going to film me from the top. Oh, okay. The <laughs> so I'm going to walk around. Easier with a walking stick than yesterday. Ta da! So, when we did this yesterday, and ultimately we got down to the lake, 
we realized that if we did make a day of it or a few hours of it, we would not be able to bring the donuts or our floaties. We'd have to minimize what we were to bring down to the water. Because typically we, we bring everything. We bring the noodles, we bring the donuts, the Yeti, the chairs, the table. And it just dictates what we're gonna do, whether we're gonna get in the water and swim away from barking dogs, screaming kids and humans or if we're just gonna sit shoreline. And the weather has a lot to do with it too. If it's even warm enough to get in the water. You what? Is it a bee? I'm getting buzzed. Okay. I, well, there's no cocktails. Oh, buzzed by a bee. I hope it's just a bee. Let's film Patty who's about to fall on her tush. <laughs> Made it. You can see down there. And this is one way down, but I'm not navigating that. That's not the tough part, part I was talking about, so I'm gonna keep going. Leaves of three. That is poison oak. Leaves of three. Leaves of three. Poison oak's right by you, right here. Well, they can't clear it entirely, but they got this nice path. All right. This canoe and whatever that is, is apparently that you could use while staying at this house. But here's the problem. Okay, so this is where I probably break ankles or whatever, but I am going to attempt to go down there. You can see how difficult this is. And a lot has to depend on the water levels. The water levels are really good. Good, especially since we've been in drought. But I guess if they're a little bit higher, we wouldn't have this to navigate. This would be the beach right here. So we'll see. Here it goes. Fingers crossed. There are somewhat steps here. Yeah. This is definitely a help by using this log. Yeah, it's not worth it. I gotta come back up. Put the feet up here. Yep. Not worth it. That's a bummer. We have that entire beach to ourselves. So yeah, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to navigate that little beach. <laughs> People said they've enjoyed it on the reviews. Of course, I'm probably much more younger and agile. But uh, even if we got down there, getting up would be pain in the butt. Plus we got ice chest and chairs. So we will have plan B. So this is plan B. We're at the lake, we're at Greenhorn Campground and Day Use Area. 10 minute drive from the Airbnb. So since we couldn't get down to the water, we thought we'd do this.
So just a few miles from the Airbnb, we found this wonderful roadside kitchen, the Happy Apple Kitchen. Yesterday, there was sun and there was rain. The, what kind of burger? Guacamole burger. Guacamole. I got the grilled cheese with onions. Order of fries and onion rings. Half and half. Half and half. And chocolate shake. This is the Happy Apple Kitchen. Kind of a landmark place here on 174. Mm. And the Happy Apple Kitchen has these amazing homemade pies. These are like personal sized pies. Absolute deliciousness. I had the French apple with caramel goodness just oozing out of it. You gotta grab one of these pies. And they have bigger pies as well. All right, so this is a low energy home. Um, one of the things they asked us to do is not use the oven unless we've really needed to because it draws a lot of power. So they have a toaster oven, oven and a microwave. We were able to use that. Um, the toaster oven we thought initially didn't work and then we found out. <laughs> you gotta plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah plug user in. air, it's almost always user air. They do have um, an air conditioner that's positioned. They have a fan, a ceiling fan in the bedroom and of course they have this fan. This was on when we came in. Honestly, when we got here, we just opened the doors and let some cool air in and it was perfect. Again, it wasn't a very hot weekend, but if you keep it closed up during the day after cooling it off at night, it, it should stay pretty cool. So the lure of this place, really what I saw on Airbnb was these full pane glass doors, right? So this is up. Try that again. <laughs> Open this up. Be gentle. So, what kind of home is it? It's this, a prefab green home. Whatever that means. What's that? It's a styrofoam based home with what appears to be slate outer outer covering. Solar. There you go. Oh, and uh, like I said, it's private, but we were visited by the U.S. Census guy. <laughs> He's like, is this address? I'm like, I don't know what the address is. I From just, L.A. I just know where it goes. So we left the card, so we got to give that to the owners. So watch out for the census people. So yes, there's, this is remote. There's, there's nobody out here. Uh, oh, and uh, like I said, it's private, but we were visited by the U.S. Census guy. <laughs> He's like, is this address? I'm like, I don't know what the address is. I From just, LA. Um, which was nice. And it's a beautiful scenery. So some of the complaints, I would say, is in their listing. They are very detailed. Mm. And here's a picture of their... Uh, guidebook. Guidebook. Rules. I mean, it's look at it. It's incredibly detailed. But there's nowhere that says that they don't have a freezer. They don't have a freezer. They have a small refrigerator, but yet they don't mention that there's no freezer. So that posed a problem, which means we had to go back to the store to get ice to get through this, these uh, three days. And well, it, while it's a small refrigerator, it's not like the small hotel refrigerators. It's a good size refrigerator. Um, it held eight to 12 bottles of wine with no problem, as well as our food. Yeah, we pretty but much yeah. refilled up the recycling bin because we had to take out all the recycling at the end of the trip. So the second thing is, you know, it's advertised that you can access the water. As you see, saw by the video, we were not able to access the water. That's not the fault of the owners. It could be about the water levels. If it's a little bit higher, maybe easier. You don't have to navigate that. So we weren't able to enjoy the little private beach. As you see, we went to the other part of the lake, which was really nice. Um, $10 to get in for day use. That's not too bad. Yeah. And we're kind of fortunate that the weather was cooler than average temperatures in July, early July. 
had it been real hot, it would have been disappointing, but the, the weather was actually perfect for most people. I would have liked it to have been warmer. So the fact that we couldn't access the beach wasn't a huge deal breaker. So it was a real nice day. So Patty will, our finance director will tell you a little bit how much this place cost. All right, so it's um, 271 ish a night, which you might think is a little expensive, but um, not really. They've got a full stock kitchen as far as, you know, foil and pots and pans, and they have some basic staples like different spices and um, salt and pepper, things like that. If there's something that you really, some kind of spice you really need, barbecue sauce, something like that, you wanna bring your own. So that's a wrap on our little vacation up here in uh, Nevada slash Placer County at this Airbnb. I'm not gonna put a link to this Airbnb in the description. I will get you the link if you like and comment on this uh, video and subscribe. Also reach out to us on Instagram right here. Send us a message and I'll, I'll get you the link if you're interested in this place.